Momochrome purple looks like deep fried ass. Well, I guess it's that time. I have to make a Lomochrome purple review video thing. Yay. Okay, so Lomochrome purple is a false color, um, heavily stylized. Does sound right. Uh, it's a funny color film that uses film trickery, aka it fiddles with dye couplers, to make a colorful but very purple color image. As far as I know, the way this film works is to change what dyes are released for each color layer during development. So for example, in a normal color negative film, the green sensitive layer releases a magenta dye in development, which is the negative color of green. So when it's inverted, you get a green color, thus green sensitive layer. Now in Lomochrome purple, the green layer develops into a weird green color dye, which then inverts to a magenta or purple color. The red layers in this film stay mostly red and the blue layer turns kind of green after inversion. And essentially, that is what gives us the color shifted look of Lomochrome purple. Now to cover all my bases for how this film works, it also seems that Lomochrome purple is doing something with the blue filter or the orange mask, uh, which is why the negatives have this like weird sickly green color base to them, unlike normal C41 film, which has an orange base. Anyway, let's talk about how the film works and more shooting. Honestly, these shots are kind of boring. They look like most of the shots online, which are, you know, this film shot through a basic 50mm lens. So I decided to chuck some film at the F6 and whip out the big telephoto, aka my 200-500. As for the film's grain structure, uh, it's a grainy boy. For a 100 to 400 speed film, it does have some grain on it. 
The packaging on this film does say it's a 100 to 400 variable speed film, which, I'm sorry, is complete bollocks. Lomography, even though you do make neat films like this, can you please stop with this variable ISO nonsense? It's confusing and annoying to new film shooters, and honestly, even to experienced film shooters, it's really irritating. Just put a recommended ISO rating on the box so people can start shooting with it, and then you can also say in the box 100 to 400 is possible, but make a clear starting point on these films for the ISO rating. Now, with that out of the way, I did find in my testing that 160 ISO is a very good place to start at because when you shoot this film at 400, it looks like pure, unfiltered, industrial strength ass. Now I also found that 100 ISO was straining the film's highlights a little bit, so I think 160 is a sweet spot for this film, which is what most of the shots in this video were shot at. I also shot a 120 roll in the Bronica SQ and the larger film size definitely helps keep the grain levels under control a fair bit. When this film was introduced to the world, the words aerochrome replacement were thrown around, and this is another dose of bollocks. The film is not infrared sensitive in any way, so it can't reproduce the aerochrome look. However, the internet has said somewhere, and I can't find this reference, that with a yellow filter the film can produce something that kinda looks like aerochrome if you're colorblind and squinting really hard, so I decided to give it a try and got results like this. And I will say the yellow filter did remove a lot of the blue from the image, and this is what a yellow filter does, so this caused the purple colour to move more towards a pink colour. So maybe there's some wiggle room with using colour filters to have some weird effects and some fun with this film, but an aerochrome replacement, it is not. I still think it looks like deep fried ass though. So while I don't think I'll be shooting Lomochrome purple again, I think it definitely does have its place as a fun, experimental film to go hog wild with. Just don't, just don't shoot a wedding on it.